Notion was pretty generous this holiday season. They gifted us a variety of new features, so let's unwrap them. And my personal favorite is probably heading toggles. I've always loved organizing my page content into toggles. They allow you to cram a bunch of information into a page while keeping it digestible and retaining a nice clean aesthetic. And when collapsed, toggles form a nice outline for the page content. But that preference for toggles has always required me to sacrifice the visual hierarchy that comes with using different size headings. But with toggle headings, we now have the best of both. They allow us to establish hierarchical sections with varying heading sizes and then fold lengthy content into those headings for digestibility, a pleasing aesthetic, and a useful outline. And I like to amplify that hierarchy with colors and dividers. You can create a toggle heading just like any other block. You can click the plus sign and scroll down to toggle heading. Or you can type a forward slash and begin typing toggle heading and then choose the heading size that you want. And that creates your toggle heading. Now you can also create a toggle heading using keyboard shortcuts by first creating a toggle with the greater than sign followed by a space, and then you can do one, two, or three pound signs followed by a space to convert it into a toggle heading. And then if you have a conventional toggle, you can convert it into a toggle heading by holding command or control and hitting the forward slash key, and then typing toggle heading, and you have the option to choose your toggle heading size. And next we have coloring for simple tables. So you're likely aware that Notion recently released this table block as a simpler alternative to tabular databases. And it allowed us to add a shaded heading row or heading column, but until now we haven't been able to apply colored shading to rows and columns. So to add colored shading, you just click the six dotted menu for the row or the column hover over the color option, and then choose the color that you'd like to apply. And we can also now automatically resize columns to fit their contents, just like you do in Excel or Google Sheets. You can just double tap the right size border of the column and it will shrink to fit the contents. And now when you click the page title within the breadcrumb menu at the top of the page, it's going to scroll to the top. And in a welcome update to the gallery format, Notion now wraps the card titles onto multiple lines, whereas previously they would just run off of the card and become illegible. And this made galleries really unsuitable for a variety of collection types. But now they're far more versatile with the ability to include longer titles. And when a card is heightened by a wrapped title, then all of the cards in the same row are going to be heightened as well to maintain that consistent appearance. And then this new card at the bottom of galleries has become a little less conspicuous and a little less intrusive in a few different ways. And then for all databases with more than three views configured, you now have the option to search within this view drop down menu, which I find particularly useful in large master databases such as my financial transactions database, which I filter in a variety of different ways and have pre-configured views for all of those different methods of filtering. So within the search bar, you can just begin typing the title of a view and it will filter in real time. And you can now shrink checkbox properties pretty much to the width of the checkboxes. Previously, if you tried to shrink a checkbox property, it would stop shrinking and leave unwanted space to the right of the checkboxes. But now you have a much nicer visual with that property being just about the width of the checkboxes with just a small margin around them. So if I'm not most excited about toggle headings, then it's definitely the ability to generate flow charts within code blocks. So the way that that works is that code blocks now accept the mermaid language. So when you create a code block, you can select the mermaid language, and that's going to give you three different viewing options. You can view just the code. You can view just the preview, which is the generated image or you can choose a split view, which displays both the code, which you can edit, as well as the generated 
image. So you can learn this mermaid coding syntax from the official documentation, which I'll link to from the video description. But I know that's going to be daunting to most users. So what I'm finalizing here is a little code generator where you can use a Notion database to create the nodes for your flowchart, nodes being these shapes with text on the inside. You can create your nodes within a table in Notion and configure all of your options, indicate the relationships between nodes, and that's going to automatically generate the mermaid code for you to paste into your code block and create these nice flowcharts within your Notion workspace. So be sure to follow me on YouTube and Twitter and subscribe to the Notion VIP newsletter to receive this resource once it's finalized here shortly. And then a few other updates you'll want to know about are that hyperlinks are now much easier to edit. When a piece of text is linked, you can just hover over it and click edit to modify the link. And when you create new linked databases, they'll now inherit the sorting rules, property visibility, and column ordering of the top table view of their source database. And then we have some improvements to roll up properties. You can hover over them to reveal a pencil icon, which you can click to reconfigure the rollup property. And when the rollup property retrieves a URL value or an email address or a phone number, it's going to function as a link that you can click. And within the pages of database items, when you configure a property as hide when empty, all subsequent properties that you add to that database are also going to be hide when empty by default. And within Notion's mobile apps, we can now drag to reorder database properties as well as the rows and columns of simple tables. And on tablets, we can now drag blocks to arrange them within columns. And then lastly, PDF exports are now going to retain the sorting rules and property ordering of the databases you're exporting. So if you have any questions or hit any roadblocks as you experiment with these new features, feel free to tweet at William Nutt.